Okay, welcome to video 14 in the Marine Invertebrate Biology series. This is class polychaete, uh, picking up from where we left in phylum Annelida. Poly meaning many, chete or cete are two terms for hair, hairs, so many hairs. And the reason why will be a little bit more obvious as we go along. Anyway, these things do do it all in terms of feeding. Carnivores, deposit feeders, suspension feeders, grazers, parasites. We'll see uh, a few examples of each of those in this video. And then where are they found? So the reason that we're going to spend a bit of time on these is because almost any uh, any annelid that you see in the marine environment will be a uh, polychaete. There'll be a few leeches, very, very few uh, times would you see an earthworm in a an oligochaete in a uh, marine or aquatic situation, uh, but they are almost all uh, benthic. Okay, so 33 to 35 in your theory book, you can label this along or just follow these and make notes. So uh, let's see, what, we could start with maybe the um, a single segment because these things repeat throughout the length of the body uh, and all we see, the only thing that's different are the, the head region and the last segment are the only ones that are different. Everything else will be a carbon copy of itself. These segments will look just the same. If you took one uh, and sliced it off from another, there wouldn't be much difference except for maybe uh, smaller, a little bit smaller towards the back. Depends on which species you're looking at. So if we look at the, um, the body plan, you can start with the ventral nerve cord that runs from the brain. So just like in the uh, uh, the platyhelminthes where, and the nemertians, we're starting to see a longitudinal length of the body type uh, vein arrangement. And so you're seeing uh, range, you're seeing coordination by the nervous system throughout the length of the body. But if we look at the one segment, you'll see that it looks the same as all the others, but it's also got this fleshy lobe that is an outgrowth of the uh, of the segment, and that is called the parapodium. Okay, like a foot, pod is a foot, para is like, and then cite or kite are hair. So it's got these hairs at the end of the of the fleshy outgrowth, and it's got the fleshy outgrowth called a parapodium. And you'll see that there's one on both sides of the segments. So in the annelids, uh, you'll see that the oligochaetes have just a hair or a few hairs on each segment on both sides. The hyrudinae, the leeches, don't have hairs on any of the segments. And for the Polychaetes, they have parapodium and setae on both sides of each segment. So these uh, parapodia and setae will be very different depending on what species you're looking at, and they are adapted for the individual environments which in, within which the organism lives. Again, we see septa, these membranes between the segments. Okay, uh, then you see. All of, so all of the uh, segments are pretty much the same, except for the last one. Now, this is where um, the new segments are added, the growth zone here. So new segments will grow between the last segment and the penultimate segment here. And this is where new segments are just added on and the body can lengthen. Uh, and then the last segment looks a little different. This is where the anus is. And at the very end of the body is where the poos come out. So then we go up to the front two. We've got the um, peristomium, which is the peri, P-E-R-I, stomium, which is the second to uh, last segment on the, towards the front, and the prostomium, which is the first segment towards the front. Okay, and out, off of the peristomium, you'll see these little antennas, uh, well, these sort of appendages, they're not antennas, they're appendages that grow off and sometimes are used for manipulating food or doing other things like um, uh, 
yeah, gathering food or sensory. And then you also have the at the prostomium, which is the very first uh, segment, you have these things called palps. The palps can be modified in many, many ways in order to uh, just to help them with their uh, lifestyle style, whichever they're adapted for in a particular environment. We'll look at all those. Then you have the eyes, and some of these will have up to four eyes on a side. So they can they'll have eyes um, and then antennas and the mouth. So this is essentially the body plan for all annelid worms. Or, sorry, all polychaete worms. Uh, okay, so this is an important one, the cuticle. Okay. The, it's a non-living extracellular, so that means outside the, the cells, outside the body, epidermal excretion. So it's a hard kind of um, shell around the body. It's not that hard. It's flexible, it, uh, but not too flexible. It resists bulging, so it doesn't allow the body to just ooze into cracks and stuff like that. It it's flexible, but not so flexible that it um, that it allows too much deformity of the body. And that's the reason it's important is because as we move into uh, the arthropods or the the shellfish and the like, we'll see how that cuticle has evolved into the proper shell of an insect or a crayfish or something like that. Okay. Uh, again, more review. We've kind of talked about these cite or kite. Uh, are the hairs. We'll have a look at those. Here's a, a nice picture of some CTA up close, a little micrograph. You could see that these things would be like sprigs on each segment. Really good for getting purchase on the substrate and helping you move across it. Here we see another example. So here is a single segment and we see the parapodia on the segment, this extension growing out, and then the setae at the end, which are modified for grip, but also for paddling. So this thing may be a type of worm that can swim a little bit. So evolution is quite amazing in that it uh, allows for things like the setae to even grow into these plates. This is a type of a uh, scale worm that we often see on sea cucumbers or on uh, starfish. They tend to grow, live on those things as symbionts. We're starting to see a little bit more complexity as we move up the evolutionary ladder. doesn't mean that we are more evolved than a bacteria or there is any kind of end goal of, of evolution leading to something like us. Uh, we're just seeing more complexity. And so we're, we're talking about the next one is a well-developed closed circuit blood vascular system, just like we have arteries, veins, etc. And its job is to remove wastes like carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and other metabolites and bring in oxygen. So they can have external gills that provide gas exchange as the blood is pumped close to the to the skin, uh, and which are essentially like our lungs or Others rely on diffusion across the skin, but that's fine. We said that diffusion was too slow for large, larger organisms, which it would be if there wasn't a vascular system, but it takes blood from the internal part, moves it around, and essentially means that the diffusion rate can be only across a, a cell or a couple of cells at any point. So how does the blood get moved around? By hearts. Another amazing thing about annelids, if you remember this guy from Terminator, he was blown up into a, lots and lots of tiny little frozen liquid balls, uh, but then all of them came back together and he regenerated into the into the cock to chase down Sarah Connor. Well, uh, it's not quite like that with annelids, but they are pretty amazing in that if there is enough energy reserve in either side of the segments, uh, as long as they can have enough energy to grow without feeding, grow new segments. They can grow a new head or a tail end of the body. Okay, and they're very good at healing as, le as well. 
like we said with eating they do it all same with sex they do it all okay there are 17 different re reproductive modes in 300 uh, species and there are a lot more species than that but uh so we're not going to go into all of those different reproductive modes but you should know that they can be dioecious which is either male or female or they might be sequential hermaphrodites which means that they might be male first and then female or female first and then male or they could be simultaneous where they're male and female at the same time they will do broadcast spawning they can do copulation or something called epitoche, which we'll have a look at in just a second. And that epitoche is how they asexually reproduce. Uh, so epitoche can be sexual or asexual where you have budding. Here is what epitoche is. So they can bud off, they can grow from their growth so new individuals which will bud off and just swim away. But sometimes these new individuals are essentially a sperm or egg factory. So this, this would be asexual if these things just grow up and become adults. But they can also be sexual with these new ones budding off. And that's uh, something, here's a picture of something like this. But if these things, sometimes with, with these things called epitokes, these individual segments are will become sperm and egg factories they'll be either a sperm factory or an egg factory and they'll break off and they'll do something like this they um they grow up and they swim to the surface waters where all the other ones will be and the reason they swim to the surface waters is because when you have a two-dimensional environment like the surface and you stay along it it's much easier to find your partner so once they get close to the uh the male like say you're a male epitoke and you swim up close to the female epitoke and you are essentially a giant egg or sperm factory you would just you burst open and all the sperm and eggs are released and that's a sexual epitoke so here's a nice picture of what uh and you can see the how the parapodia setae are really modified for for swimming and like paddles and then again analogs like um like uh what are those uh, lunar moths and that kind of things where they have massive antennas which are sensory in order to be able to find a mate we're starting to see similarities in the way things have evolved for similar purposes and then but these things are also considered quite a delicacy in some parts of the pacific uh and Eggs and sperm are very energy rich, so we uh, tend to wind up uh, liking to eat those things, just like chicken eggs or caviar or the inside of a kina. So that is it for uh, episode or video two of annelids. We'll see you on the third one.